coming up on the Gino Oriema Show, presented by UConn Health. Uh, I've been keeping my fingers crossed that we would lose soon, and it just didn't happen. I was disappointed. The coach looks back at how his team fared in conference play. Some games we know are not going to be as challenging as others. And Gino looks ahead to UConn's chances in the NCAA tournament. I asked them that one day, are we the same team that, you know, played that first week of the season? To a, to a person, they're like, not even close. Plus. Number 12, Sanaya Chong. As it's nearing its end, we'll reflect back on Sanaya Chong's UConn career. I always thought, Sanaya, if you ever get your head screwed on straight and make basketball a priority for yourself, that you would be really, really good. All that and more on the Gino Oriana Show, presented by UConn Health. We want to reflect back on conference play, and I think we have to start with that Tulane game. How did that game end up being so close? Well, I've been saying all year long, and nobody believed me, so now you finally believe me, <laughs> that um, if the kind of the perfect storm comes along, you know, where um, you have somebody gets hurt. Kia Nurse is not going to make it to the court here tonight, though. There's a foul problem. And a foul called on the Fisa Collier. Four on the Fisa. And you just can't get any shots to go in. Samuelson, too strong. So everybody's telling me all the time, well, what are the chances of that happening? Well, they all happen on Saturday, right? We're missing a starter. Fisa gets into foul trouble and she has to sit for long stretches and nobody can make a shot. And they started throwing in everything you can imagine from different spots on the floor. And, you know, you have what happened to happen. Still an opportunity here for Tulane. They throw it up at the buzzer. It's off the mark and Connecticut survives in New Orleans. The part that gets lost is that could happen any night. To me, the fact that it hasn't happened in a hundred and some games, that's kind of remarkable. But that's a possibility any night. This weekend, next weekend, you know, the wrong kid gets in foul trouble, the wrong kid gets hurt, you can't get anything to go, and the other team plays great, you're out. Was not having Kia Nurse a big of a factor as you would assume? Did it surprise you a little bit too? Well. I think it was the first game we played without her, if I'm not mistaken. So there was a little bit of uh, uh, lack of flow, you know? And um, that happens when all of a sudden you don't have someone out there who's been a huge part of what you do. Um, and, you know, if you notice, it's gotten better since then. You know, it looks a lot better because they've, had time to adjust to each other. But yeah, that first game was a little bit of an issue. It shouldn't have been as much of an issue as it was, but um, it was an issue. More offensively than it was defensively, obviously. You know, everybody's like, you know, what happened? Uh, when we played Tulane at home, I think they scored 56 points. Okay, when we played them down there, they scored 60. So they got an extra two buckets. So our defense didn't get affected that much. The only problem is we scored 63, and when we played them, we had 100. You were pretty calm after that game. I was disappointed, you know, because um, uh, I've been keeping my fingers crossed that we would lose soon, and it just didn't happen. I was disappointed. And uh, I told uh, uh, those people afterwards that uh, Lisa Stockton, the coach, had a chance to be coach of the year, and she blew it. I felt bad for <laughs> I think you're the only coach in America who is like maybe hoping a little bit for a loss. <laughs> nah, I, 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 obviously, we're not trying to lose a game, and obviously, we were, you know, excited that we were able to to win. But um, having games that go down to the wire like that, and um, reminding your players that this is a possibility, they they don't believe it. They're like everybody else. They're like you and everybody else. They don't believe it. So we showed up for practice after that game, and it wasn't me being upset with them. They were upset with themselves. And that's when 
you know, good stuff happens after that. Is the conference schedule enough of a challenge for this team? It, it depends. Um, it depends what the challenge is. Um, and are they mature enough to understand the different challenges that present themselves? So, yes, yeah, some games we know are not going to be as challenging as others. But if that's your only goal, hey, look, we're just trying to win this game, then you're not going to get better as a team anyway, no matter who the, who the teams you're playing against are. Um, and I, I said before, I'm not sure how mature this team is, and I'm not sure how mature they can be given their age. So that's going to show up every once in a while. So don't think this is going to be easy. It's not. This is just the beginning. It's going to be like this for six months. Every single possession. Now it's not an issue anymore. So we've gotten past all that. Now it's one game and you're out. So whether it's a challenge or not, whether they're mature or not, we'll find out. Want to find out more about your Yukon Huskies? We'll both think of something that happened pertaining to us, but no one else knows what's going on. Go to sny.tv slash UConn for an inside look. It would be Gabby, because she can dance, and I would just hit the moonwalk right there in front of everybody, no shame. We'll be back with more of the Gino Ariama Show. There were years when um, you were trying to make the NCAA tournament and senior day really was the last time they would play on that court. So it was really, really emotional for the players and for the kids. Since then, the players themselves don't have that anxiety. They know they're gonna play again at home. But what it does is um, it gives us uh, the coaching staff, for me in particular, just a chance to kind of reflect back and you made some sort of a commitment, and, you know, you went to their house and you sat there and they were high school juniors or seniors and you talked about all the great things that could happen if they came to Connecticut and they had all these goals and aspirations of what they wanted to be. And now you look back, you know, and that night, you know, you can look in their, their parents' faces and feel like, okay. For the most part, we kind of lived up to our, to our promise. To me, that's, that's the best feeling. Our next honoree has no idea she's about to join this group of Husky greats. Newest member of the Huskies of Honor, associate head coach Chris Daly. When you think about that and that we surprised her with it, and we did it on a night when two All-Americans went up on the, on the wall there. You, you really feel like you did something really deserving. One, she's not expecting it, so it's going to mean a lot. Two, to have her on that wall means you've accomplished something that very, very few people have been able to accomplish. And if my name's going to be up there, then your name has to be up there because you're just as responsible for all this as I am. Our next senior has seen action in 135 games, including 33 starting assignments, 24 of which have come this season. Her senior season has been her finest, as she's averaging career highs in points, rebounds, assists, and steals per game. Number 12, Sanaya Chong. As Sanaya is about to graduate, how do you think she feels? I know after senior day, it kind of maybe hit home for her a little bit. You know, everybody said that it was a big struggle for her uh, the first couple of years here, as it is for a lot of kids. Uh, um, the adjustment is, is, is kind of difficult. Um, and I always thought, Sanaya, if you ever get your head screwed on straight and make basketball a priority for yourself, that you would be really, really good. So maybe senior night for Sanaya was, I finally got it. I finally understand mm -hmm. what this is all about, what it's supposed to be like, what, what it's capable of being. You know, for some seniors, like let's say last year's seniors, 
they were coming out on senior night to put the crown on their head and, you know, hey, the, the queens of college basketball. For Sanaya, it was more, wow, I can't believe I made it. That's pretty cool. How much of what you saw in her first three years was playing under the shadow of the big three? How much of a factor was that? Have you been talking to people? Because uh, literally somebody just asked me that question this morning. Must be a hot topic. Must be a hot topic. Um, well, when you're faced with that scenario, you can either say, all right, I'm going to come to practice and I'm going to beat out Mariah Jefferson or I'm going to make sure that I play. Or you can just say, well, what difference does it make? No matter what I do, it's not going to change. And unfortunately, I think for Sanaya, there were games where you would look at her and you would say, wow, we've got to play her 25 minutes, 30 minutes every night. And there would be a week where she would be as good as anybody on the team out there in practice. And then all of a sudden, there'd be two weeks where she would just completely lose it. So I don't know that it was as much who was in front of her, the, those three seniors, as much as I'm not sure she had the kind of confidence that she could sustain it. Mm -hmm. She didn't put enough pressure on herself to make herself a bigger part of what we were doing. She was kind of uh, probably disappointed, but not willing to like really commit herself to it. And now all of a sudden this year, she is. Don't worry, you're gonna make a play here to win the game, right? You're gonna make a play here to win the game. Right. Right. And because she is, she's playing a lot. And because she's playing a lot, she's gotten more confidence. And because she's become more confident, she's played better. And because she's played better, she keeps getting more confident. So it all started, just like it snowballed the other way the last couple of years, it started to snowball the right way. And now, if somebody would have told me at the beginning of the season, listen, uh, there's a good chance that you're going to be going into the conference tournament and your two starting guards are going to be Sanaya Chong and Crystal Dangerfield. I might have been in the Bahamas, like, on the next plane going, somebody else do this. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but now she's someone that we can trust. I can't leave her wide open. She is just in a zone right now. She's someone that, you know, we look to and say, hey, come on, you know better. And she makes shots. She makes plays. She's become a better defender. Um, uh, she's pretty valuable right now really is. Number 20, Tierney Lawler. What about Tierney Lawler? We know on the court she isn't as much of a factor, but she certainly is off the court as far as Seems leadership for this yeah, team. Yeah, you watch her. You watch her on the sidelines sometimes, and she's pretty animated over there. Um, and you see her in practice. She, she almost has gotten to the point where she jumps into drills, but not as like doing the drill as a player. She's almost in the drill as an extra, like graduate assistant coach. Yeah. You know, so she's doing things to help the other players get better. Um, and that's a real, uh, that's an incredible uh, observation by her. Like, this is how I can help our team. Guys, finish! Yes. Here you go. Get your timing down, get your timing down. Everybody's got to do something to help our team. And what she does is pretty valuable. It's pretty valuable. Would you ever hire her? No. <laughs> I know that's not her career. Yeah, she doesn't, want to, she doesn't want to coach. And she's too quiet. You need somebody that is going to be um, doing this because they know this, this is my life. This is not her life. But I've been wrong before. How do you teach people to be better when you never lose, when you never have failure? 
How does that happen? If that's all you want to be, then just keep doing it the way you're doing it. You want to change, then change. I know it's hard, but it still is quite simple. You don't gauge success by, did we win? You, you try to gauge success when you watch a film. We have way less steals than the other team does. Our guards are pathetic at that. Some guys didn't open their mouth one time in five minutes. No, oh, get off you, get off, you ain't playing. Did I fail to do the things that I take pride in? In this defense, all you have to do is help. Doesn't matter what I want. And now what am I gonna do to fix it? Good D down there. Hey, that was, that was actually not bad. Together, one, two, three, yeah. together. So let's talk about this team heading into the tournament. What are you and the coaching staff most focused on, would you say? Some of our players just are very, very challenged defensively. I'm putting it mildly. Got to play the game on defense. Stand and watch. We go into the tournament that we address some of, that, some of those issues about where we are defensively. Uh, as individuals and as a team. All the way around, same as we said. No, don't do that. The way we were, yeah, we got to get these guys down there and doing this more often. I don't think we have problems scoring points. And I made a comment the other night on the bench that the worst thing that could ever happen to a basketball player when they're young is be able to make shots at a young age. It's the worst because then they think that's the only thing that's important in basketball. That as long as I can make shots, I'm good. And that's not, that's not accurate by any stretch of imagination. So we've got to continually address that part of it. And then our rebounding, because of our size, it drives me crazy. And I don't know how much you can fix in a couple of days or in a week or so, but whatever time we have left, we're going to devote a lot of time to that. You had some tough games early, Baylor, FSU. How much has the team improved since then? I asked them that one day. Are we the same team that, you know, played that first week of the season? And to a, to a person, they're like, not even close. Not even close. I mean, that, that first week of the season, I think they were... They were skeptical as well as I was. They were questioning themselves as well as I was. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm too hard on you guys. I think I'm too demanding. This is our first time without those three guys. What are we going to do? Who's going to do what? What are we going to do when we get in a jam? You know? And uh, there doesn't seem to be any of that hesitation now. They're kind of cocky. <laughs> So was the South Carolina game then an, a good indicator of where this team is at? Uh, yeah, it can be. It can be. Because um, in that South Carolina game, we didn't play particularly great. And yet, we played well enough to win the game. That is almost a, as good a sign as everybody played well, and that's why we won. It, it's... It's a good sign because there's so much room for improvement, even still. So if we can win a game where only one or two of our players played pretty well, then we can really get significantly better. And I think we are a little bit better. Do you think this team is battle-tested enough? Well, I looked at the top 10 teams in the country according to what everybody says, would be probably the top eight seeds. And I think we've played all of them. So what else could we do, you know, to get ready? I mean, the rest of it is mentally you have to be ready. You have to be a grown-up, you know, and I, I talk about that all the time. You, you can't be a girl's high school basketball player you have to play college women's basketball if you want to get this done. And not even college women's basketball, Connecticut college a, women's basketball. A version of Connecticut basketball, correct. <laughs> correct. There was so much uncertainty this year, Gino. Do you feel like heading into the tournament, you now know what you have with this team? Pretty much, yeah. 
I got a pretty good feeling what we're going to get every night. I mean, you look at Lou and Fisa, um, and they've been pretty consistent every, every game. Gabby, there are games where she has just been spectacular, and she's been the talk of the country. And then she allows herself to just kind of drift back to being normal. And my, my talk w with her always is, what if, what if you're able to be that extraordinary player that you were in the South Carolina game or the Notre Dame game, where you just single-handedly almost won the game? Can you do that every night for four more weekends? Because that changes everything. <laughs> and if Key is healthy, so there's still some question marks, you know? Um, you know, Crystal's had one amazing game all year long. You know, she played the Baylor game and everybody was ready to, you know, anoint her. <laughs> and uh, can we get that out of her every night for the next four weekends? I don't know. Are you nervous going into the tournament if you have to have Crystal start? Am I nervous? Of, yeah, in place of Kia. Does it make you a little hesitant? Or yeah, it does. Not so much because she's starting. But what makes me nervous is who do we have coming off the bench to take her place when she needs a breather? So mm -hmm. that's what Kia gives you. Mm -hmm. When Kia's in the starting lineup, you know, okay, we've got Crystal. And there's not that overwhelming pressure on her to have to be great for 30 minutes or 35 minutes. That's kind of worrisome, stressful. That's why I can't give up wine for Lenny. <laughs> That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed the Gino Ariema show presented by Yukon Health. For upcoming show dates and times, make sure to check out sny.tv slash Thanks for watching.